Hello and welcome. Now we'll talk about the Chapter 2 of the DBDP Act and how we can map it to any organizational needs. It's very crucial for organizations to align their data processing activities with the Act. This will help ensure a strong and compliant privacy framework. Let's talk about Section 4 and Section 6 of the DPDP Act and how we can map it to any organizational needs. So Section 4 is about how we process personal data for lawful purposes with consent or legitimate uses. Whereas Section 6 is about how consent should be free, specific, informed and is easy to withdraw. Action steps to implement this in an organization would be to have a consent management system where we develop and implement a software system to ensure all the consent is clear, informed and is easily managed. Suppose a company manages multiple clients and handles large amount of personal data like Google and Facebook. So Google and Facebook usually use CMPs. Now CMPs are consent management platforms which is a software tool that helps organizations to collect, manage and document user consents for processing personal data. Now how does a CMP work? When you visit a website, you might see a pop-up asking for your consent to use a cookie or to process your data. This pop-up is managed by a CMP. CMP also allows users to give or deny consent for different purposes such as tracking, marketing or data analytics. Users can also withdraw their consent anytime through the CMPs which ensures that the organization respects the user's preference. So Google and Facebook, all these large companies, use CMPs to ensure compliance with data protection. When visiting a website for the first time, you often see a banner asking for a cookie consent. Now this is a part of the consent management system, which is very important for data protection and its compliance. Second, we need to review consent forms regularly. Here we periodically check and update forms to ensure they clearly state the purpose and scope of data use. Example of fintech companies such as ICAC or HDFC bank usually needs to collect information of customers. So here they make sure that they update their consent forms regularly in terms of service to remain compliant with regulations and ensure clarity for users. Third, easy consent withdrawal. Over here we provide simple ways for individuals to withdraw their consent whenever they like. For example, an online education platform such as Coursera helps and allows users to control their data privacy preferences, including withdrawal of consent for personalized ads or communication through straightforward options in their settings. Let's talk about Section 5. So here we need to inform individuals about the data being collected, its purpose and their rights. The action steps would be first to have clear notices. So over here we create clear notices explaining what data is collected and how will it be used. For example, an online travel booking company, examplebooking.com, collects personal data for reservations and for its targeted promotions. Now, booking.com includes a transparent privacy notice when users enter their detail. This notice explains how the data is used for bookings, personalized recommendations, and for its marketing. It is presented in a very simple language, making it easy for the users to understand. Second, to have effective communication. We need to use various channels to deliver notices like emails and website banners. For example, a financial service provider, example Paytm. It, Paytm is an Indian digital wallet which frequently sets data privacy updates via emails, in-app messages and website banners. This multi-channel approach helps ensure users are informed even if they don't frequently check one specific platform. Third, have multilingual notices. Make sure that notices are available in several languages to reach a wider audience. For example, a government health service app that collects data for citizens' health programs and needs to inform a diverse population. For example, uh, Aragya Setu. It is an Indian government COVID-19 tracking app which provides privacy notices in multiple languages, allowing users from diverse linguistic backgrounds to understand clearly what exactly the notices mean. Okay, so let's talk about Section 8. Over here, we'll ensure data accuracy and protect it against any breaches. So Section 8, subsection 3 to 5 ensures data accuracy and security, whereas Section 8, subsection 6 notifies authority and affected individuals in case of any data breach. Action steps would be to have data verification mechanisms where we keep data accurate and up-to-date through regular checkups. 
For example, an insurance company needs to maintain accurate record of its customers for policy renewals and for claims of processing. Example, ICICI Credentials, a major insurance provider, frequently reaches out to customers through emails and SMS to verify and update their personal data. They also offer online service portals where users can review and correct their information. Second, have security measures. Use encryption and access controls to protect data. Suppose a healthcare provider such as Apollo Hospitals employs end-to-end -end encryption and strict access controls for its digital health records, safeguarding patient data for unauthorized access and breaches. Third, have a breach response plan. We need to develop and have clear plan for responding to data breaches, including notifying relevant parties. For example, a digital payment platform suffers a cyber attack that compromises customer data. So in 2018, the data breach at the SBI, State Bank of India, involving its YONO app highlighted the importance of data response plan. SBI quickly notified customers, took corrective actions and enhanced security measures to prevent any further incidents. Section 9. Over here, we safeguard personal data of children and vulnerable individuals. So Section 9, subsection 1, talks about obtaining verifiable consent from parents or legal guardians. Section 9, subsection 2 avoids processing that harms children. First, we need to have age verification mechanisms. Here we need to use methods to verify age and get parental consent for minors. For example, YouTube Kids, a platform tailored for children, requires parental consent during account setup. It asks for parents' email ID and uses potential verification methods to ensure consent is genuine, protecting children from any inappropriate content. Second, have child-friendly policies. Here, create policies that protect children. Example, Google Family Link app allows parents to manage their children's device and app usage. The privacy policy is designed specifically to be understandable by both children and parents, ensuring that the children's data is protected and is used responsibly. Section 10. Over here, we handle large volumes of sensitive data responsibly. Okay, so section 10, subsection 2. Here we need to appoint a data protection officer to conduct regular assessment and audits. Action steps would be to appoint a DPO. Here we need to have a dedicated person responsible for data protection and compliance. For example, a very large e-commerce company processes significant amount of sensitive data. Here including customer payment details and personal preferences. The DPO oversees data protection practices across global operations and ensures that the company meets its regulatory requirements. Second, conduct regular assessments. Here we need to periodically review data protection practices to identify and mitigate risk. For example, let's take a financial institute such as HSBC Bank. They conduct regular data protection assessment as part of its compliance strategy. These assessments help identify bank its vulnerabilities, ensure robust security measures, and demonstrate compliance with international data protection laws. Third, training. Here we need to educate employees about data protection to ensure ongoing compliance. For example, a healthcare provider deals with confidential payment records and needs to ensure staff are aware of data protection protocols. Here they conduct regular training sessions for the staff on data privacy and security. This session includes practical examples, role playing and updates on latest regulatory changes to keep staff informed and prepared. Section 7 and Section 8 here, we need to allow individuals to access and manage their data and establish effective grievance mechanisms. Action steps would be to have user-friendly interfaces. We need to develop easy-to-use platforms for individuals to manage their data preferences. For example, a streaming service allows users to control what kind of personalized recommendations they receive based on their viewing history. For example, Netflix allows users to manage their viewing preferences and data collections setting through a clear interface. Users can adjust what data is used to personalize recommendations and can opt out of specific data users via their settings. Second, grievance mechanisms. Here we need to establish clear procedures for addressing data-related complaints and issues. For example, a telecom company like Airtel provides multiple channels such as customer care number, a self-service app, and web-based support for users to report issues. Their grievance addressal process is structured to address complaints effectively with clear timelines for resolution and escalation. In conclusion, by following these steps, organization can ensure compliance with DBDP Act 2023, 
build trust with individuals and create a secure data processing environment thank you for watching